Hey everyone, I want to take a few minutes to show everyone this new idea I came up with. Now this isn't entirely original in this design, but the idea I had about 15 years ago to create something called a portable air conditioner. But it's not a typical air conditioner like you can buy in the store. This is an air conditioner you can make at home out of something that uh, uses ice, a pump, and something to radiate it, and a fan. So I was looking on the YouTube to see if I found any, any videos that are kind of close to the idea I had. And I came across people using these ice cooler boxes as a hillbilly air conditioner. Um, now, this, this is a great design because it's, it's portable, it's not heavy, uh, it contains the water inside of it, and you can put all your parts inside of it when you're done. Um, it doesn't use any more electricity than it does to, than, than it takes to run a fan, which in this case I have a fan that's 15 watts. So let me just show you what I've done. So on top here, this is just a PVC elbow. Uh, I think it's a two inch. You could probably go with a bigger one, but that doesn't matter. And it's pivotable, right? It just there's holes drilled through the top of this lid. I'll show you when I open it up. You see that there is a hole here, and there is a hole there for that. Now, what I have inside it is actually the most important part. Now, this is what this is how mine differs from the ones I've seen. Now, I've seen I've seen the cooler part, and I kind of took that idea from, from other people. And I've seen a radiator part where people take a heater core from a car and put it outside of the cooler and run it up through a through a fan or something like that. In this case, uh, I took a old uh, condenser out of an antique refrigerator. And that's it. That's this guy right here. All right. I'm not going to zoom in with the camera, but I'm just going to tell you it's General Electric in a metal tag. It says refrigerating machine. That's how old it is. It actually has to decide to say it's a machine. And it also says Freon 12. So, like today, you see R12, R134A, all that stuff. This said Freon 12. So, this is out of a fridge that's, I think, from the 1920s, I believe. Uh, and I said, well, you know what? I, I could use this. I could use this to radiate heat by pumping hot water through here, or I could use it to radiate cold air or absorb heat from the air by pumping ice water through it. So the way this works is I have this on the bottom here. If you can see it, there's a fish tank pump right here. It's a very small one, and it just pumps into the inlet on here, and then it comes out the outlet. So it cycles through here, and it cycles through slow enough to uh, where you're not going to be drawing all the heat off, you know, that quickly. So you don't want it to do it fast. You want it to do it kind of slow. So there's that. By the way, this cord comes out the top of this hole next to the fan. And I got rubber feet on here, and the, the stand that this is actually on is from a freezer. And it's just a metal grid is all it really is. So I'm going to set that there. And then, of course, you have the fan. And that's all there really is to it. All you got is... The fan that goes in the hole there fits perfectly because I cut it out with the jigsaw. Uh, you plug that in, this is a 15 watt fan, and that motor is probably like 0 0.01 amps, so it's not even, might be a watt. So you're running, say, 16 watts. So you can run this on a battery backup unit. So if you have a power outage in your house, uh, you could plug it into a battery backup unit you buy in the store. Uh, or if you have a 12 volt battery, you can just plug an inverter in there and plug in the AC. Or you can get a 12 volt DC fan. In this case, I decided to go with the universal one and just have an AC, and I can convert that to, um, to AC from DC if I needed to from a battery. Uh, so if you have a power rod, you have no AC. Guess what? You have emergency air conditioner. And the great thing about this is that all you gotta do is freeze a big block of ice in something, put it in your chest freezer, or whatever freezer you have, and you can put a bunch of them in there, and they will last for hours in this box. Um, and that's, that's really good, because you can have several blocks in there, and it'll last all night or as long as you need it to. Most power outages are not going to last quite that long, unless you're in a disaster type situation. Um, what inspired me to do this, actually, is uh, in less than a week from now, I'm going to have my air conditioning disconnected so I can have my basement waterproofed. So I was thinking, well, it might not be good to open the windows at night because it might be humid outside or hot. It might not be doing any good. Um, so I know you're saying, oh, you know, in the old days, we didn't have an air conditioner. Well, 
I didn't have an air conditioner when I was younger. I slept in, this, in the heat and sweating all night long. It's not comfortable. The fact is, this doesn't cost much to make. This cooler was 20 bucks, this fan was seven. This I had laying around, I don't even know how much it costs, but a dollar, even less. This I scrapped, this radiator part, the condenser I scrapped from a refrigerator, that was free. I took the great, uh, I took the pump from a, a fish tank I'm no longer using, and that was maybe $10, something like that. Could have been less than, I don't remember. But it's super cheap. Now the thing is, is you can buy the chest freezer, it might be expensive to buy that, but say you already have a freezer. Okay, you're gonna have one anyways. You're gonna put the ice in there. It probably takes less energy to turn that into a solid block of ice and to get it down to that negative temperature than it would to run a 1500 watt air conditioner for the same amount of time it takes to freeze that ice. Um, and you can continually use this. Now, this here is going to work the most efficiently, not just by putting ice in here, this, the difference is between a lot of these boxes I see on YouTube is they just put ice in there. Now, what happens when the ice melts inside this box? It turns to water. Okay, so you have this very thin plain surface area for the air to collect uh, coolness and come out. It doesn't work. So what you need to do is recycle the ice water that's inside here after the ice is melted and you need it to go through a radiator and that's what's going to make it actually work the most efficiently. So you can fill it up with a bunch of ice, but you don't need to put that much ice in it. Just one single block of ice. The air is still going to hit that ice, so it's still going to get cold from the ice itself. But the ice water flowing through that radiator is actually what's going to do the best job of getting the air to come out cold on here. Now I've seen designs like this uh, with ice alone. Um, I, I can hardly call this a design, but I've seen ideas like this where just ice alone, a block of ice, will put out 40 degree air or less out here, and it can be 80 or degree higher in the room. Um, now, it may not do that for long, because once that ice starts to melt, it's not gonna be able to work as efficiently because the surface area of that water is not the same as the surface area of the ice, and it's not gonna be as cold. You need the air to circulate around it. So you increase the surface area of the water by pumping it through piping and drawing you're actually drawing the heat, the, the coldness, the cold water flowing through the radiator is actually absorbing the heat from the air. And that, that should last, uh, let's say you put a, a jug of orange juice size, maybe just a gallon size, that should last at least four hours, at least. Um, so that's the design here, and I thought people might like this uh, idea. So you can, you can change it up any way, any way you like, but you have to remember, um, the most important part is the radiator. Uh, you could fill it up with just ice, but it's just not going to work as well. So the other part that I do not have done yet, because I'm going to test it first, um, inside around the fan here, I want to have a cone that comes down, or a tube that I make out of, I don't know, plastic or something. It comes down and it's going to just sit on top of the radiator to make sure that the air coming from the, the room is blowing directly onto the radiator and then it's going to come out from underneath and then it's going to hit the block of ice that sits next to it. So on this side you have the radiator and this side you have the block of ice. It's going to flow under there, hit the block of ice and then come up out of this hole here and it's going to be going past the block of ice too. So it's going to be cooled twice basically. Um, so that should be it and uh, that's my new invention. So I hope you like it and uh, don't be afraid to try it yourself. If you don't have air conditioning, you don't want to run your air conditioning, you got plenty of ice to use, or you can just buy a bag of ice, but I'm sure everyone has a freezer, you can make your own. So take it camping with you too. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really good idea, um, sleeping in the tent if you need some cool air blowing on you, and you have money to spend on ice, but you don't have electricity to use, make one of these. Okay, so here's what it looks like inside the cooler. There's the hole down there and it's coming down, powering my pump. And then you can see, you can, you can you should actually hear it a little bit too. It's going in this side and it's coming out there back into the water. You can actually feel like, I turned this on and within 10 seconds it already started getting cold. So it is working very efficiently to create cold air just from this radiator. I can feel it right now that it feels like ice. And not only that, it's already starting to condensate. 
So it's drawing moisture out of the air, kind of like a dehumidifier, but in this case, this is not going to dehumidify the air because I'm just blowing this air back out into the room. Um, so all the, all the th everything that's evaporated, um, I'm sorry, everything that's condensed onto here is going to be blown out there through uh, vapor. So it's not gonna take the moisture out of the air, but it is gonna cool the air in the room. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the fan on here and then we're gonna see just how cold the air is coming out of this cooler. So here's my multimeter with a thermometer on it and 75 degrees and that is the temperature that, uh, that is the temperature that my other thermometers in my house say, so that's accurate. So let's see what happens when we put this on the outlet tube and see what kind of cool air comes out of there. So there it is. The air coming out of there is 62 degrees. The air in the room is 75 degrees. I got my temperature gauge right there. All I did was just take a placemat for a dinner table or, you know, whatever. Um, and I know what it looks like, but no one's going to see it, okay? So don't worry about that. Uh, I was going to be thrown away anyways. So this just sits on top of here. That lines up with this hole. And uh, it does fit in there perfectly, but I'm doing it one-handed now. There. Okay, so it's just going to sit there. It's... it overlaps the underside of this, so it's going to stay in place, it ain't going to go anywhere. But the, the, the uh, trick is, is to get there just to flow down over that radiator and not like just come this way and then out the tube. Because I don't want the room air to come through here, I want it to be cooled first. So the fan will just fit down inside there and then it's much easier not having it attached because that way it's not ever in the way. You can easily move it around. And all I did was just cut its size and then use staples to hold the ring. That's it. So you can see, uh, as I showed you before, I got my uh, tube there, which directs the air down through the radiator. And then there's my block of ice, and the water right now is actually flowing over the block of ice and then recirculating. So it's keeping the water as cold as it can be. And uh, that's probably the most efficient that's going to get. This is not going to really uh, cool down your room very well. It'll work okay for your... Um, you know, personal use if you're sitting on a couch or laying in your bed blowing it on you. But the most efficient way is to actually take a tube here, around here, uh, and then put that tube, say, like under your, under your bed sheets while you're sleeping. And it's not coming out so fast where it's going to be uncomfortable, um, but it's going to blow the cold air under your sheets to keep, not only keep the air circulating, but cooler air than what's in the room. Um, so you can sleep more comfortably. And again, more like if you don't have air conditioning or you uh, or you have a power outage and you're running this off a battery, uh, just those kind of cases. This is by no means an efficient way of, um, you know, creating air conditioning. You might as well just buy an air conditioner and use that, um, you know, as far as how many BTUs of uh, cold air you're going to get. It's not going to be that much, but, you know, it does work. It's just not... Uh, it's not going to work as good as you would hope it would work.